Good day everybody. Um, I had a request on my YouTube videos to do a little uh, segment on track cleaning and uh, of course there's lots of different ways of doing track cleaning. I think like a lot of us uh, we uh, try lots of different techniques and methods but I'm going to talk about a few of them today and show you what I do on the Lion Valley Northern to keep it clean. Uh, to start with, you got to kind of think about the environment your railroad's in. Uh, mine's in the basement, so what happens is uh, or my floor above it does not have a protected ceiling. If you have a protected ceiling, uh, that's going to reduce the amount of dust and dirt that will uh, bounce off the uh, ceiling and fall on the layout. And as a consequence, the issue of track cleaning doesn't become quite as uh, pronounced as it would be in, say, for example, my style of ceiling, which is an open uh, framework so uh, it gives you lots of opportunities for uh, little dust particles and things to trickle down from the ceiling and onto the railroad. Another uh, factor that comes into play I guess is whether you've got a good uh, filtration system on your furnace and or if uh, you have uh, some other method of removing dust and dirt from the air. No matter how we hard we try though it seems that we always end up with some dust and dirt uh, floating around and it typically will get on the rails. Another source of uh, dirt getting on the rails is the railway equipment itself from the wheels of the uh, rolling stock as well as the locomotives. And then what really um, changes things too from a chemical perspective is that there's usually electricity flowing through your tracks and as a result of that it creates a magnetic field which attracts the dirt and depending what's on the rails this can uh, cause problems regarding uh, build up and so on and so forth when dust particles cling to whatever's on the rails. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the pros and cons of things that are out there first and then we'll go on to show what I'm doing. Uh, first of all, one of the common products people talk a lot is a, is a track cleaner and this is one of the types that uh, is out there. This is uh, Goo Gone. Now Goo Gone's uh, something that you can get through Walmart and other stores and uh, it's a it's a cleaner so what it does is it applies uh, a chemical to the track so that when you swipe it off it, the build up whatever's on it will, uh, will uh, chemically mix with the goo gun and come off and onto the cloth so it's kind of a rubbing technique of some sort to lift it onto uh, you know a J cloth or something like that the difficulty with uh, this type of material is how do you apply it to all your tracks you have to have some way of getting it on the, on the, all the rail and then some way of swiping it off. So that's a, that can be a real issue. Have you got a really bad spot or something where there's a buildup of, uh, I don't know, some kind of a black gunk? You can use some of this to remove it. But I, I would take the next step after that to get rid of it off the track as much as possible because by leaving any kind of cleaning fluid on the rails, you're just going to create another situation where uh, the dust and dirt has something to cling to and you run into a problem. Another uh, popular uh, type of cleaner that's out there is this uh, CRC 2-26. This is an electrical grade um, plastic safe multi-purpose precision lubricant and what it really does is it increases the electrical properties of your rail. Now this stuff here you don't need uh, a lot of it. If you, This isn't something you apply by the bottleful. I mean one can of this could probably last you 20-30 years and what I typically do is put on a plastic glove and I'll spray a little bit onto a cloth and then I'll dab it to the rails and typically that would mean just kind of I won't do it today because my track is clean but I would spray a little bit on here and then I take my cloth and I'd find a spot and I just put a little there and a little there and I just run the trains and just by the activity of the trains going round and round it spreads this everywhere and it increases electric conductivity um, a lot of people have had success with this product, but again, you're still in a situation where it's not going to remove the dirt from your rails. So uh, if, there's, if you put too much of this on, again, you're going to build up a residue on your track. And when you do that, what's going to happen? The dirt and dust and the electrical current is going to cause some kind of reaction and, and you're going to end up with muck on the tracks again. So, what do I do? I use uh, a product that I want to, to clean the track but I want it to dry right away so that the particles have nothing to cling to. 
found my favorite product out there is isopropyl alcohol and I use the 99 percent this is available in all the drugstores and a variety of different brands and why the 99 percent it comes out in different percentages sometimes it's 90 sometimes it's 70 I get the most alcohol or the cleanest form of alcohol the reason is anytime you add water it's not a good situation when you put it on metal or rails and it doesn't do the job so 99 percent is the way to go so what's the process well we got to get it on the track number one and then we got to get it off so that you're left with nothing but nice clean rail so how do we do that well I got a lot of track in here and so what I need to do is have some kind of a system of getting it around the rails so I have a, a system here that I use and basically they're they're available brass products. This is a tank car. Basically what you do is you load the tank car uh, at the top with uh, the isopropyl alcohol and there's a valve that you can open and close to, uh, to basically uh, control the drip which comes through the bottom of the car and onto a plate. Now the plate is brass. What so I use on the bottom here when it drips through is a corduroy fiber that it comes with the kit. Now if you get these too dirty I just wash them but if they wear out you can replace them by just finding another thin piece of corduroy and cut it to size. And it just clips on here as you can see and what happens is the, the fluid drips down it wets this and it's applied to the rails as it runs along the track. Okay so that is how I get it on the track. To get it off the track, I've got a separate car here, and there's a couple of manufacturers that uh, basically uh, provide this uh, this type of uh, application. Uh, this is Centerline Products, this particular car. It's another brass car. Basically, it's a flat piece of car with a roller, a brass roller. And uh, even though it comes with um, cleaning strips to put on it. I found that uh, you run of those pretty quickly and the easiest way to uh, replace this is, is to cut some J-cloth to size and basically what you do with this let me step back a bit please is I got the brass roller and I it's, it's to size and what I do is I just roll it up like that and it's uh, what it does is it generates a surface for that's friction against the rails as it goes around the track when it rolls and it picks up the residue left by the uh, alcohol lifted dirt so a lot of people can run these cars back to back so you would have a locomotive and then you'd have your your wetting agent and then you'd have your dry roller but what I try to do is I separate them and I'll put a locomotive specifically for this car just to generate enough space and this one follows it and you can see it rolls and it swipes and flips and cleans now what do you do if you go backwards you can see you run into a big problem it rolls out on you and that's not any good and it jams up comes off the track and you have problems so what do you do to fix that there's a couple things you can do and uh, one of the things you can do is you can run an elastic band around the car in the middle and what that'll do is it'll still apply to the rails and still have some capability and this is a big elastic but you can imagine what it looks like there just to show you it's in the middle there and uh, the rail would run on that side and that side and it would roll back and forth in many different directions and you can go into sidings and things like that okay now that is kind of the way I do it for the main line now if I haven't used the layout in a while or if I find there's crusty bits on it and I really have a lot of grunge there's a couple things you can do now the traditional thing is you can use a bright boy and that's hydraulically going around and scrubbing the rail and uh, some people complain depending on the type they use that it might scratch the rail surface or, or something along that line so um, an alternative is that uh, a good friend of mine um, 
has come up with and uh, what, what it is is um, some uh, gyp rock sandpaper and this uh, product is uh, 200 grit and um, how it's applied is again I use my tank car instead of putting the juice in and having it run through on the felt I, I put this piece of uh, gyp rock sandpaper on the bottom and it runs around the track and just the uh, the sandpaper surface itself will uh, take off the surface dirt that's gunked on so if you're in bad shape and you want to clean it this is the way to go so what you want to do is basically apply that first then use your alcohol car and then your swiping car or you can use this use the swiping car alcohol and go back to the swiping car anyway at the end of the day by doing this uh, around the layout what, what you'll end up with a situation that uh, your rails will be clean. You'll be able to run your finger along the rails and have uh, no black or dirt on it. Um, how long does this last? Again, it, it depends on the environment you're in. Um, if, uh, if, you do a, if you do some regular cleaning, if you run your layout a lot, um, it wouldn't hurt to do it before every operation session. You know, it may take a couple of hours, but if you're retired, it's worth the effort because uh, then you have uh, worry-free running and as you've seen from some of my operational videos the trains run there's no problems or issues with it now the other thing uh, I want to point out is uh, the issues related to turnouts um, if your turnouts are, are wired um, with, with um, switch machines there isn't really a, a much of a problem because the power will continue to flow through all the rails depending on which way the switch is thrown and so on and so forth. However, if you have electrical contact uh, based uh, power to your switches uh, and you're using electrofrogs or something along those lines and you rely on the points, sometimes these get gunked up and dirty because it is a point where two metal pieces come together. So what I, what I use to clean those, and I only, I only do it when I find there's a problem switch and there's some stalling on it, is uh, this fiberglass uh, type material that comes in tubes. And when you slide it in a pen like this, and I'll go through and I'll take the point and I'll just run completely over the rail to the inside, pushing against it to clean it. And it'll come shiny clean that way. And I'll do the other side as well you can actually go right over the rail and it'll clean down to the point so anyway until you're happy and you see that the gunk is removed and then you'll find that because it is fiberglass it leaves little bits of fiberglass and you don't ever want to touch this stuff or it'll just cut your hands to pieces so what I'll then do is I'll t again I'll take some of my 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol and I'll apply it to a piece of towel and then what I'll do is I'll stick it in like that between the rail and the point and I'll put pressure on it and slide it along like that pulling the gunk and dirt out because it's wet with alcohol it'll actually remove whatever's between the rails and it'll also clean the fibers out and uh, it may not work the first time you may not have got it all but I just go back and do it again and again I run a train through it and then the next thing you know it's just fine so that's basically what I do for cleaning the rails. Um, the other part to make the trains run well is you got to make sure that your uh, your locomotive wheels and your uh, your uh, rolling stock wheels are clean. Now, how do I do that? Well, come on down here and I'll show you. I have this little test track here, and it's got four clips on it that are at a distance that are just right for this industrial um, blue towel and so what I'll do with that is I'll take my isopropyl alcohol and I'll run it over and make the track wet so then the next thing I'll just grab my throttle here and I'll uh, power up my locomotive and I'll run it back on the alcohol and I'll speed it up to the point where the wheels are spinning. I'm not putting any pressure on because I don't want the gears to get wrecked. And I'll just run it back and forth and you can see that there are patches of black there that are starting to appear. 
Now I'll run it onto the dry surface as well. This is speeding up again. It's getting it's on the alcohol surface here, getting black, and then I dry the wheels off on the dry surface over there. Okay, so you can see that there's uh, some black there. Now, if I want to make sure it's perfectly clean, what I'll do is I'll t unclip everything here, move it over to a dry surface. And we'll run it back again. And I'll just let it spin back and forth a bit. And then slowing it down, letting it stop. And then pull it off. And if it looks clean, then I know that that wheel surface is, is, is good. And then I turn the locomotive around and I do the same the other way. Now, I'll, that's what I do with the locomotives. And I, and I find that the combination of cleaning the wheels and the locomotives and cleaning the track will uh, make everything run really, really well. Now, I'm going to just grab any car here. I'll just go over here. I'll grab this caboose here. And the caboose has got metal wheels. Here you can see it better in the light there. And to some degree they're shiny, but no matter how hard you try, you're going to end up with some black on the bottom of your wheel sets. So periodically, as regular maintenance, you should take groups of cars and run them through your maintenance shop. Uh, I did today 25 coal hoppers uh, to clean the wheels on those, and by doing that, uh, and if you do that on a regular basis, you'll have better running. So again, what I would do here is I would just take my isopropyl alcohol, and this time I put it in the middle of the towel, like so. And I take my piece of rolling stock, watch your coupler there, and I run it on there, and I start running it back and forth, like this, just back and forth from the wet to the dry, to the wet to the dry, to the wet to the dry, cleaning the wheels. Now, you might you might think it's done just because it really looks black. Look how bad that is. That one hasn't been done in a while. And you just keep going back and forth, loosening the gunk. Loosening the gunk. Now, if you find that no matter how hard you try, it just doesn't seem to be coming off. Now I'll go to the dry part and go back and forth, back and forth. You can see there's still a little bit of black on there. You can actually use a little goo gun and I'm talking a little bit. So here's my Goo Gone bottle. Let me just pop it open there. And I'll put it just a tiny bit like this and like that. Okay, Not very much because this stuff is powerful. And I run the Goo Gone on it and what it'll do is really break down whatever's on the wheels there. And you can just see it's black. Black like crazy. Okay. Now again, I'll flip this around and find a dry spot. If I can, I guess I'll have to try it this way. And with the goo gone, I want to get all the goo gone off. So I'll just run that back and forth till there's nothing left. Now if you got 500 to 1,000 pieces of rolling stock, you're going to have to do this on a regular basis, maybe 20 at a time. But if you've got 100 pieces, you could probably do get away with doing this once a year for each, each car. Now that's starting to get pretty clean there. You can see when I pop it off, it looks clean. But I'm not done yet. Because I put Goo Gone on, I don't want any gunk to go back on the tracks. I will look at my little bit of isopropyl alcohol that was there and look what happens now I'm getting more why is that because there was some goo gone on there still see that that's your goo gone stuff that's come off there and now you have pretty much a nice whistling clean set of wheels and I think that's really worthwhile doing. So, 
that's the process I follow. So just to do a quick wrap up, what I do recommend is that you use the 99% isopropyl. That you have some kind of an applicator car to get it on your tracks. That you have something to swipe it up with. It's an investment. These cars are more expensive than your regular rolling stock, but believe me, it sure gets rid of a lot of headaches when you're running a, a, a good size layout. And uh, have some way of, for getting in at really rough spots. Either use a softer type of bright boy, and you can look and find a black spot on the track, and you can just get in to scrub that small spot. Or you can use something like this for the hard to reach places, which is that, uh, that sandpaper. If you want to improve your electric conductivity, you can use just a touch of this on the rails. Um, but again, uh, what I would recommend is once it's been spread around, uh, if you find that you're, and this is something that will happen, you know, like before every op session, just check your track and you're going to find that there's uh, some black on it again, then you're back to the process of re-cleaning. It's something we all have to do. I don't, haven't met anybody yet that hasn't had to clean their track on a, on a regular basis. So that's it folks. Hopefully uh, this uh, lesson about what I do will uh, encourage you to go out and give it a try. And uh, I'm sure that there will be lots of opinions about other methods and techniques. And of course I, you're willing to, more than well, welcome to try them all because uh, I sure have myself. And over time I've um, you know, tried some and found them to work, some to work better than others. But this is what I like and hopefully it will help you.